Thank you. 
Ask is coming. What's up, Nordium? What's up, Yaniv? What's up, Go Everywhere, Robert? How you guys doing? Francisco Bay Area, live every Tuesday night, it's ESG Live with Chuck and Ray Mir. Tonight, a scooter showdown between the Emu Touring, Ninebot Max, and Apollo City. Scooter World News, and now your host, Chuck Temple! Hey, hey, hey! How's everybody doing? It's a beautiful Tuesday here in, uh, where are we? Berkeley, Albany, California. Um, thank you for joining us. We have a fantastic show for you today. We're kind of going old school. When I first started this thing, we looked, and I think it's been actually almost a year now that, that we've been doing these shows. I used to just talk about scooters. That's it, the whole time. It was just scooters. Uh, it was a deep dive. It was all the data we were getting. And you know, I'm gonna do that again today, but today it's gonna be based upon three scooters, not one. This, the, the kind of showdown that we're doing today is the Ninebot Max, the E-Move Touring and the Apollo City. Now these are three scooters really between $800 and 950. However, value wise, they're really between 800 and 850 dollars. There's really not a ton of price difference. Once you put in the coupon codes and the discount codes and all that stuff, really these these three scooters are like right together. Um, they're also the top three scooters that people are asking questions about. And so, you know, there, there's a lot to go over. There's a lot to cover. And if you're looking at scooters in this price category, these are three of the kind of like most popular ones. They're really good. They're all single motor. They're all somewhat portable, but we'll get into that. Um, so thank you guys for tuning in every single week. It's awesome to see everybody. Um, I say hello to, you know, I see, I see everybody in here. I saw Voro, Paulo, I saw Michael and Seal, Yaniv. I mean, Robert, I'm going to miss people. Um, uh, but it's really, really great to see everybody every single week. Um, we do the show for you guys. So, uh, today, okay, so we got Photo Friday, we got a deal of the week, which is two two different scooters, right? Uh, we've got this deep dive scooter kind of showdown. We've got the micro mobility, you know, news, which includes the death of the Segway, right? And we have a couple of videos for you, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, we're gonna have Q and A with the audience at the end of the show. So what you need to do, right, is if you want to get your question answered live by myself or Ramir, whatever, um, just hit at electric scooter guide after your comment. Uh, the produ our producer, Richie, will cue them up or Ramir, or someone's gonna cue them up and then we'll get to them either during you know the deep dive if it's a question about the scooter or if it's just like a general question, we'll get to it and that'll be towards the end of the show. So, um, so that's what's happening. Then of course we have the Facebook giveaway, which Voro Motors is, um, sponsoring this week. So thank you to Voro Motors. Um, all right. So gosh, what episode is this? Like number 44? Uh, it's crazy. Um, the mission of the electric scooter guide is to help you find the perfect electric scooter. We do this show every, uh, Tuesday, five o'clock Pacific daylight time. This is the time now rain or shine today. It, I'm looking outside right now and it's a beautiful day the birds are chirping the wind is blowing through the trees i want to get out and go scoot um please join our community uh if you're on youtube hit the subscribe button give us a like a thumbs up let us know that you appreciate this content we'll keep doing more of it for you um that's also how you're going to get alerted to all of our content oh and i forgot to say right after the show we have the premiere of the scooter showdown 
battle of the best really under thousand dollar single motor electric scooters um that's the premiering video it's like a 14 minute video it's super data heavy which is how we do things i hope you guys like it we've been working on it for a week and a half um let us know what you think but that's premiering directly after the show the link to that is pinned in the uh comment the first comment um in the um well the comment of the video that you're watching now make sure to follow us on instagram you can find a link in the video description for instagram and then also on Facebook is really the place where you can go and get your questions answered. We do a lot of community building on that Facebook group. That's all really David Vosk's doing. So thank you to David Vosk. And, but thank you to everybody that, I mean, there's, I can't tell you how many thousands and thousands of comments come in every single week on that group. There's so many people posting. There's so many people helping. It's, it's just like got its own life now. And it's amazing to see. Um, we do, we do a bunch of things on there. We do the giveaway on there. So the giveaway that's coming up in the show, that is actually the, the way you enter it is you just like a post on Mondays, right? We do, um, Wednesdays. I usually have a guest on or Raymir and I will just hang out and talk about video games or scooters when whatnot. Um, we do exclusive interviews on the Facebook group, but we also do photo Friday on the Facebook group. Um, so let's kick off this show with photo Friday. All right, so we got a pretty fun photo Friday for you as always. Um, so honorable mention this week, you know, it's funny how s similar people win every week. I don't understand how this is, but honorable mention this week goes out to Todd Murray, uh, South Beach, Miami, Florida with the E-Move Cruiser, the Turbo Wheel Lightning Plus and multiple Wolf Warriors it looks like from the SoFlow E-Riders group. Um, so this is this looks fantastic. It's nice to see all these great scooters out there. Um, so thank you and congratulations to Todd Murray. Uh, the runner up, you've seen her before. This is Brittany Clark from Sutherland, Australia. And you know, when you win Photo Friday, I'll say whatever you want me to say within reason on, you know, live. So here it is. She says, taking the Xiaomi Pro and the 08X for their daily walk. I'm not sure why she's walking these scooters because, you know, I don't know. We'll have to ask her. She says, just wanted to say there were some awesome photos this week. Good job, everyone. And I like to say to the winner, coming second to you, baby, is like winning. So the winner, luckily, is, I believe, her partner. Otherwise, again, this would be really creepy. Uh, the winner is Mark Carlos. Amazing photo, though. Creepiness aside, this is like such a such a beautiful photo. Um, this is the Cabo Mantis framing the Sydney Opera House. He says, thanks. Being part of Photo Friday is always amazing because we can have you share our voices and th say things from us if we win. Thanks for making it so fun. Uh, well, the pleasure is all mine, Mark, Brittany, and Todd, uh, it's really good to see your photos. I mean, they're, they're getting, and you know, it's interesting. They're really getting better every week. I feel like the level of fo the photo game is just getting better and better all the time. So pretty cool. Um, okay. So that was photo Friday and we've got some coupons for you. And this is the deal of the week. All right. So two two big uh coupon codes deals this week and you could imagine right we've got three scooters that we're featuring this week one of them the nine bot max is actually unavailable great uh but we do have the e-move touring which is seven percent off with our coupon code coupon code is just our website electric-scooter.guide you can see the coupon codes in the video descriptions you don't have to remember what i'm saying it should be on the screen as well um, so the e-move touring, you can get 7% off, which brings the price down significantly. Um, the other uh, deal of the week is the Apollo City, which just came back in stock. That is uh, $100 off of your accessories. So accessories, things like, you know, big lights, 
um, you know, locks, things like that, you get a hundred bucks off those things, which you're gonna probably need, uh, you know, anyway with your scooter. So thank you very much, um, Voro Motors and Apollo Scooters for, you know, letting our viewers have these, uh, these different coupon codes. All right, um, so let's do the deep dive. Let's talk about, let's talk about these scooters. I love, I mean, I think these scooters, to be honest, are really the sweet spot in, uh, you know, in the electric scooter game right now. So many people are looking for scooters and that like, you know, that $800 to $1,000 price range because there's a lot there. There's a lot of good competition and they're really different. The, the Ninebot Max is not the same as the Emu Touring and the Emu Touring is not the same as the Apollo City, right? People think, oh, well, they look the same or hey, this is the same, but this is, these are not the same. These are not the same factory. These are totally and wildly different scooters. Um, and I also wanna mention real quick, again, if you have a question about these scooters, as I'm going through the, um, you know, the different features of the scooters, hit at electric scooter guide in the, um, in the live chat. And, um, you know, I'll try to get to your question. I, I I'm going to pop my little screen open here and I'm going to refresh it. So it updates for me. Okay. So first off, let's just talk about the price. The price is the most, you know, the first thing people kind of like look at for price, you know, of course, 7.99 on the e-move uh sorry on the nine bot max although for some reason amazon right now moved it down to 6.99 it's usually not 6.99 it's usually 7.99 always once in a while they go to 7.69 it's currently out of stock because stinking new york times or whatever said it was the best scooter ever i don't know if you guys saw that article uh i think it was the new york times they rarely do scooter stuff they said basically this was the best scooter out there one of these shows, we're gonna have to like rip apart some of these like people who basically don't r really ride any scooters and just, I don't know. We have a thing against fake news, fake scooter news sites or fake review sites or whatever you wanna say. It's just like, we do a ton of work and we kind of know the differences between these scooters. It's not that the nine mile backs is not the best scooter. For certain people, it might be the best scooter for sure. But anyway, you know, they gotta, they gotta do their thing more power to them. So anyway, Ninebot Max, typically $7.99. E-Move Touring, typically $8.99, right? Apollo City, $9.49. So that's the lineup for prices. However, of course, as you know, um, the, the uh, E-Move Touring, 7% off, brings it to about $8.36. And then, of course, the um, Apollo City, you know, you have that $100 off accessories. So really, right, when you think about true value, right, if accessories are the same value to you, coupon code is total value because that brings down the price, you're really looking at $800 to $850. So it's, it's very, very close together. Um, so let's talk about how these all these things stack up. So first off, let's talk about the range. That's usually the first question that people ask us. So if you don't know what we, you know, electric scooter guide, one of the things that we do, and in fact, one entire day of our whole week is devoted to just testing the scooters because the manufacturer claims don't typically hold up, right? And range is usually the one that's the most overestimated. So what we started doing is we started doing range tests like a year ago, we started doing range tests. You can find all of the testing that we do in our performance data page or performance test page on our website. We take professional quality, we use um, race logic equipment, we use a 20 Hertz uh, helmet mounted, uh, you know, data logger, right? That uses like, you know, GPS signals and we get extremely accurate data literally at a 20 hertz which they don't make that particular unit anymore we got we we work with them to figure out what we needed because typically we need the most amount of data points especially for our braking tests but anyway that comes later so let's talk about the range so when we when we so we do the range right so we got so just so you know here's what we got nine bot max 28.1 miles you move touring 22.1 miles apollo city we got 17.9 miles um, all of our range tests are done on the same loop. It's a 1.8 mile loop. Um, you know, I, I, one time in the Facebook group, I actually shared the actual route that I go on. Um, so it's, you know, it's consistent in that way. It's always a 160, 165 pound rider, depending on how much, you know, dinner we've had. Um, and so it's pretty accurate. Um, so 
Now, range and battery size usually coincide. So the battery size on the Ninebot Max 551, right? E-Move Touring, you're going up quite a bit in the then that battery capacity is 624 and then of course for the Apollo City is 634. So it actually goes up, right, in battery capacity and yet the range, right, is exactly opposite of what we're getting for the battery size. So this is really interesting. It's interesting to me. I don't know if it's interesting to you guys. Um, so, so here's kind of the deal, right? Now, if the scooters were wildly different shapes, one of them wasn't aerodynamic, or let's just say the weight of the scooters was totally different, right? Now you have like you have variability there, but th but that they're not really that different. They're only three pounds difference, right? And and the shape's not really different. So why why are we getting such wildly different numbers? Some of you guys probably know why. But the reason is, is that the speed of these scooters is different, right? So, and, and the power, right? So if you're gonna accelerate extremely quickly to your top speed, you're gonna burn up more power than if you slowly accelerate to your top speed, right? So that's number one. Number two is that your top speed is gonna be, re so the, the, the faster that you ride, the more energy you're using because of wind resistance. Right. And, and wind resistance is not a linear relationship. It's like a squared relationship or whatever. So if you like double your I'm going to say this wrong. Anyway, let's just leave it at the fact that when you go faster, it's not just a one to one more energy that you're burning. It's like quadrupling or whatever. Right. Your energy. So somebody's going to get this exactly right. Actually, one time I looked up the equation for it. Uh, I think it was again, it was one of those Facebook posts that somebody was like, questioning why one scooter got a little different range than another scooter, um, you know, and, and our testing and stuff like that. And so we got real deep into that. I'll have to find that post. So for average speed, the Ninebot Max averaged on the range test. And now this, so I'll just tell you the way that we get average speed and I'll tell you how we get this data. The average speed for the Ninebot Max on the range test was 14.5 miles an hour. For the E-Move Touring, it was 16.2 miles per hour. And for the Apollo City, it was 17.6 miles per hour. So these are really different top speeds. And that is what really makes most of the difference in terms of the actual range and how it compares with those larger batteries. All right. So in other words, if you took the Apollo City and you went as slow as the Ninebot Max, you would probably get close or even more than the Ninebot Max's range. Maybe we should we should try that actually, right? <laughs> but it's hard to do that because you you know it's like when you pull that 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 trigger throttle on the Apollo City, you're gonna accelerate faster. It's hard to not, right? Whereas the Ninebot Max is a slower kind of steady. It's like you know it's a slower steady kind of like ramp up of power, and so you're not gonna get that initial like jerk, right? Plus it's also a kick to start, whereas the um, E-Move Touring and Apollo City are zero start, right? So on these range tests, we ride them as we would ride during our normal commute, right? We don't ride them at the same speed because like that's boring, basically, right? So the faster scooters, of course, we're going to ride them faster. That's just how we do it. Um, the other thing is this is not an exact. So if we're stopped at a light, right, you might think that actually, oh, well, well what if you stopped at a light? Because we do stop at lights, right? Um, so the way that we calculate average speed is Justin does it. He uses like Pascal programming, something, something. And he like removes all data points where it's below a certain miles per hour and just removes them from the equation. So it, whatever. Anyway, it, it's, it's quite scientific, I believe. Um, and I rely on Justin who is, who's our scientist, our resident, legitimately a scientist, PhD to get this done. And he does. Um, finally, just real quick, I'll let you know that the battery type is a little different. Ninebot Max is a generic battery. The E-Move the, the, the e Touring just got upgraded to an LG battery. So that is now on anything that you're buying today and shipping, that is now your, that's, that's what you're going to get. And then the Apollo City uses the Dynavolt battery. So, you know, for, for, I know, I know some people really like to know what type of battery. Now, you know, um, okay, let's get into power. So there's a big difference here in power, right? As we kind of alluded to before, and, and you guys, many people will know this, right? So you're not, so we're going to talk about nominal power and we're going to talk about peak power. Okay. Your nominal power for the Ninebot Max is 350. For the E-Move Touring is 
500 and for the Apollo City is 600, okay? Um, but let's also bring up the question of uh, peak power, right? Peak power being what is the maximum that the motor can output? And this is gonna be for a short duration of time, right? So you don't damage the motor. And, and these, this is kind of like built in, right? And actually when you look at the, the peak power, right? you actually don't have a huge difference in the um, in the scooters, right? So peak power on the Ninebot Max is 750, on the Touring is 750 as well, and on the, and the, uh, on the Apollo City is 800. How does that relate to actually what you get, right? So we get a lot of weird claims for power, and this is, again, why we started doing our own tests. When I first started doing these tests, I literally had a GoPro pointed down, I measured out my street, um, and I timed how long it took me to get to, to duct tape in, in, in the road. And it wasn't real, I mean, it was somewhat scientific, right? Cause I would then look at the view and I'd like see at what point I got to 50 and I look at the GoPros, uh, you know, measurement in terms of GPS, uh, that, you know, their, their speedometer. It wasn't super accurate because the GoPro is actually not really as accurate as the current equipment that we use. But this is how we really know how fast things are. Cause like you get, you know, you get like used scooters and well, like we didn't know, like then when they're saying like, oh, it has a 700 watt motor, it's like, well, is that peak or is that sustained? Because if it was 700 sustained, that's higher than the E-Move Cruiser, right? But the used scooter is not going to be as fast or as powerful as the E-Move Cruiser. Come on, right? So, you know, motor wattage, it's all about tuning. It's, it's, it's a lot of other factors. You can't just look at motor wattage by itself and know how fast you're going to go. What you have to do is you have to test the scooter. So that's what we do. Um, so to 15 miles an hour, uh, and in, in all these cases, right, I'm just going to tell you right now, the touring and the city win, right, in all these cases. It's a 48 volt like system versus the uh, Ninebot Max is 36. Although, shout out to Carter, you know, someday he, he told me he could get the, you know, the Ninebot Max to beat the Wolf Warrior or something or E-Move Cruiser. So I'm still waiting for his mod and his hack to be able to do that. But anyway, as it is, the way most people use this stuff, acceleration of 15 miles per hour, for the Touring, of course, 5.4 seconds. For Sorry, for the Ninebot Max, 5.4 seconds. For the Touring, 4.5, so big difference. And then, of course, the City wins right that race to 15 miles an hour by 0.2 with a score of 4.3 seconds. Now, when you're accelerating further, right, and you get to 20, right? So, of course, the Ninebot Max does not get to 20, okay? the But the, the Cruiser and the Touring, sorry, the Touring and the City do both get to 20 miles per hour. And the City gets there a little bit faster. It gets there in 6.9 seconds versus the um, the Touring getting there just a hair slower, 7.2 seconds. Now, things are actually slightly flipped when it comes to hill climbing. So if you have a lot of hills and you want to go up there the fastest possible, right, you're looking at 13.2 seconds. This is our 10% average grade 200 foot hill climb. The way we do this test is we start at the same spot on the same hill every single time. And we do, you know, we, we start from a standstill. So that is, uh, so the standstill is, you know, um, basically we just, you know, we start from, we're, we're not, it's not a rolling start, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, so the, um, so the hill climb test, we got the touring up that hill in 13.2. The city got there in 13.9. And then, of course, the Ninebot Max, you know, lagging a little bit behind at 16 seconds. They're all getting up the hill, right? They're all getting up there. And they're all getting up there, you know, relatively fast. I, I think I even have, um, you know, uh, some data if you ever want to know, you know, what speed they're getting up the hill. I think I have that as well. So your hill climb speed. Yeah. So the e-move touring average speed was actually t over 10 miles per hour the city's sp average speed 9.8 and then the the max average speed was 8.5 you know but of course by the time it hits the peak right of that hill your speed is actually going to be faster right that was just the average from from the get-go so you're probably hitting like 12 13 miles an hour by the top of that hill which is like pretty damn good darn good um someone had a question in here and i'm going to um so someone's asking about tires, and I'm going to get to the, the tires in the tire section, although you're asking about honeycomb better than airfield. We're going to talk about that in the tire section, which is coming up. Um, finally, I just want to real quick say 
Top speed, okay, top speed is very different on these scooters as we alluded to in range. Top speed on the max, right? It says it's 18, it's really 17.8, at least with my with my weight. Um, top speed on the Touring was exactly 24 miles per hour. Top speed on the Apollo City, and this is very surprising and something that I've been questioned on many, many times, maybe five or six times now, and I've had to explain, I've explained to resellers, I've explained to everybody, and I've showed the data on this. The top speed is faster than advertised by not a little, by a quite a bit. The top speed is 28.6 miles per hour. It's advertised, I know, at 25. My data is right, I promise. <laughs> it's It's been checked and double checked. Um, it is, is, absolutely, uh, is absolutely the right uh, data. So um, why that is, you know, I, I don't hundred percent know, you know, you know, what is causing that? It just, that is what it is. Um, and then finally, we also do a 200 foot test. Uh, and that is just equivalent of the um, 200 foot test is really just more equivalency to the quarter mile test. We don't really even put this one online, but this shows you how fast you can get to 200 feet from a dead stop. The city won this race in 9.4 seconds. The sit, the touring was just a hair behind 9.8 seconds, and the um, Ninebot Max about a second behind at 10.6 seconds. Um, okay, so pretty cool. Yeah, so I mean that that worked. I'm gonna, I'm gonna scoot over a little bit. Ooh. Um, okay, so let's talk about portability. Okay, then we're gonna talk about ride quality. Uh, and then we're gonna talk about tires and we'll get to Sam Murray's question in the tire section when we're talking about tires. Um, so for portability, you know, all three of these scooters are about the same weight. They're, you know, 39 pounds on the on the Apollo, 39 pounds on the E-Move, and 42 pounds for the Ninebot Max. So not a lot of difference there. But when it comes to portability, we also look at the folded size, right? And there's a huge difference when it comes to folded size. In fact, this is kind of the, you know, three things on the um, three things on the uh, touring and on the city fold up, right? It's a telescoping stem, right? It's folding handlebars, and of course the stem collapse, right? It collapses. So on the on, on the Ninebot Max, you don't have those folding handlebars, and it's a solid stem. The stem does not telescope. So when everything gets folded down, okay, your your total folded size on the Ninebot Max is massively larger than on the on the other ones. And what I did, I never did this calculation before, but I just wanted to kind of see for myself what the cubic feet was for the Ninebot Max cuz I always think of the Ninebot Max as really not that portable to be honest, right? Cuz those handlebars stick out about 18 19 inches. So as it turns out, when you look at the folded size and cubic feet, the Ninebot Max is 10.1 cubic feet versus like five times less total volume on the Touring and the City coming in at 2.4 and 2.8 respectively. The only real difference between the, um, the Apollo City and the E-Move Touring is really just the width. The Apollo is just one about one inch wider than the uh, E-Move Touring, but they're the same length when folded, right? And the same and the same height. So you know when you're talking about being able to bring one of these scooters in and like tuck it underneath a desk or something like that, the, the Nine Pot Max is not really that portable. It's just not. It it it, it does fit in most trunks, right? It's going to pass a trunk test. But, you know, those handlebars stick out. So when you're on the subway, if that ever happens again, you know, you know, hiding those uh, handlebars is sometimes not not that easy. You know, they kind of knock into things. Right. Whereas, you know, the touring in the in the city, they're just more narrow. OK. Um, you know, we'll also talk about the folding and unfolding speed, because that is where the uh, Ninebot Max really shines. Folding and unfolding is, is is absolutely super fast. The mechanism's really good on the Ninebot Max. There's no question about it. Um, with the Apollo and and the Touring, you know, you do have three different things that you have to do, right? So it's like with the Apollo, you you know you, you you know you're still pulling the stem up, which is fine, right? But then you do you know you're gonna want to raise up those handlebars, which is great, and then you can adjust that, which is a nice thing. And then also you'll need to pull out the handlebars. And it's a twist system where you twist in the uh, you know the handlebars to lock them in. Okay, 
uh, and then and then also just make sure right that that bolt that secures uh, we'll talk about this in safety but there is one thing you need to do when you unfold you just need to wiggle those handlebars and check that the bolt that that locks everything together makes that clicking sound um, for the eMove Touring, it's really the same thing, but their stem has like a pin system, right? So it still has that same like clasp, okay, that holds it in, but the pin system, you need to push that pin in and there's two different, um, you know, heights that you can get to. Uh, and we're gonna talk about how that relates to taller riders in just a few moments. And that is in the, uh, in, in the video, in the showdown that's premiering after the show, that will be there as well. Ride quality. All right, let's talk a little bit about the ride quality here. So there's a lot that goes into ride quality when we, you know, we have these templates where we try to cover all these different, you know, you know, things for ride quality because ride quality to me is suspension, it's tires, it's throttle style, it's cruise control, it's deck length, it's deck clearance, extendable stem. I mean, honestly, ride quality is also speed and acceleration. But since we cover that in another section, we try to leave it out of this section just you know, just because otherwise it would be confusing. When it comes to suspension, you know, we kind of rate, we kind of have to do kind of, you know, uh, well, first, Ninebot Max doesn't have suspension, okay? And we're going to get into tires and how that affects damping, you know, in the next section, but there's no suspension. The E-Move um, Touring has really good suspension. I would, I would like to say that this has the best suspension really at the $1,000, even $1,100 level, I would say this is probably my favorite scooter overall suspension, okay? The Apollo City has really good suspension. The rear suspension is really nice. The front suspension doesn't have too much travel, but it still works. And again, we have some videos. Oh, you're, yeah, there is a video right now, but in, in our... Um, yeah, whatchamacallit, in the premiere coming up, you will see that there, you know, we'll show you exactly how, like the travel, the suspension, we're jumping on the scooters, all that kind of stuff. Um, so for suspension, I would say the Touring is the best. The City is just right below the Touring and then, you know, no suspension on the 9 Bot Max. Now the tires, okay, we're going to go into tires next, but I'm just going to really quick say for tires, when it comes to ride quality, Tires are best on Ninebot Max, not no question about it. Second best for ride quality, the tires second best is going to be the the Apollo City, and third best is going to be the um, E-Move Touring. And I'm going to get into that in the next section a little bit about like what factors make up what makes a good tire because all, and then also there's there's maintenance considerations because the Touring has a rear solid tire and the other two are dual pneumatic so there's different things that we can get into but when it comes to ride quality right what I can say is that pneumatic and larger tires are going to be better than solid tires and smaller tires okay so solid tires you know they're not going to form fit to the road as well right? And so you, so when you're braking on them, right, they're going to have a more tendency, tendency to skid. If you have a smaller tire, okay, you're going to, you know, when you have real rough roads and you're turning, you're not going to get that traction. You're going to feel slight, slightly, you know, you're going to, you know, what do you call it? Just slide just, just a little bit and you can feel that, okay? So the tires on the Touring are just, are eight inches and it's a, it's a front pneumatic rear solid. The tires on the City are dual 8.5 pneumatic. The tires on the Ninebot Max are 10 inches tubeless pneumatic pre-slimed. So some 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 really good stuff on that scooter. Uh, throttle style. Of course, you know, we prefer, we, you know, we do prefer that thumb throttle, which is only on the Ninebot Max stock. Okay. It's a trigger style throttle on both the Touring and the City. Now, the way that those scooters are kind of arranged you know, I, I, I hate, what I really hate about trigger styles is when I have my finger really outstretched because then it's not that I've got my other fingers like this. D do this right now. Put your fingers out like this, like you're gripping something and then also try to like, you know, have any strength or like have this like, you know, just put a little pressure right here and then, you know, it, it just doesn't work that well. Now, on these two scooters, particularly, I typically am gonna pull that throttle all the way in, which means my fingers are actually gonna be way more close together. So the throttle style on these ones are not, it's not like they're the worst of the throttle styles, they're, they're okay, actually. However, 
both the touring and the city both have a um both they both have uh optional thumb controllers that are thumb throttles that you can get after market so you know it, it's it may not be a fee you know it's like not a huge deal because if it really bothers you you can switch it sorry for the sirens going off in the background if you can uh, not sure if you can hear that um kato's asking what scooter i like out of the three uh yeah oh man do we pass 150 viewers okay let's get back to that 150 viewers um okay so um yeah so throttle side we covered that and then you know just think about how your thumbs naturally go right it's like this okay um cruise control they all have cruise control and they're all optional so so that's good we don't really love cruise control on by default because it is actually a bit dangerous because you don't always remember that you're in the cruise control it's not that cruise control itself is dangerous it's that if you forget you're in cruise control like say it activates when you're cresting a hill and you're doing a u-turn like we do on our on our hill climb tests i've had this happen many times i'll be cresting that hill cruise control activates and then all of a sudden i'm lurched forward on my way back down that hill and i almost hit a car or something like that that's what we don't want to have happen luckily none of these are on by default i i, I believe um what's really nice though is that the nine bot max has an audible alert when it does go into the cruise control so at least you know that it's in that mode. The other scooters have it. You can turn it on if you're a more advanced rider, if you have a longer commute, that kind of thing, that's great. You could totally use it, but it won't alert you that you're in that mode. You'll just, you know, you can kind of feel that it's in that mode. Um, you know, you just kind of let off the, the trigger a little bit and you'll kind of feel that. Um, deck length. Okay, deck length is the other big one, right? When it comes to ride quality, deck length the total size of the deck is hugely important when it comes to ride quality there are scooters that are otherwise great scooters that i wouldn't really recommend because i think their deck size is too small none of these scooters have a too small deck size okay um the deck length on the um nibot max 19.8 inches the deck length on the new uh e-move touring is actually now going to be 22.8 so it already was the longest the new, the newest version that they're just announcing, like this week, it goes an inch longer, so it's going to be twenty-two point eight. And on the uh, cruiser and on the um, city, it is twenty point five. So they're all pretty long. And actually, in the video, we're going to show you a comparison of how this, you know, feet kind of fit on that scooter and how and how it kind of runs. But none of them are are bad. None of them, I would say, are too small. They're all actually pretty good. It just so happens that the um, the touring is the longest and so you get to spread your feet the widest and that does lead to probably the most comfortable ride um deck clearance five inches on the touring which is massive if you look at that scooter you're raised up pretty high um you can get over curbs like you can go over a lot of obstacles like that we really like that on the city just a little bit lower at four inches and then on the nine bot max you're at three inches now three inches is actually not enough to go over curbs unless you're going at a high speed or you you know you kind of jump the curb um so that's just something to be aware of you know you're not scraping on bumps or anything like that and as long as you're going at some speed you'll get off those curbs without scraping it's just you know you just have to remember that kind of stuff right that the you know the, the max is not like a sporty scooter by any means right it's like dependable and ruggish uh and then finally uh, we do have an extendable stem, not on the um, Ninebot Max, right? But the other two scooters do have that extendable stem. So shorter riders, you can actually lower that that stem real, you know, down very low. Uh, and on the Touring, you know, it actually has the the, the highest. So I want to actually bring in Raymir uh, to just tell you about, you know, what he thinks about the ride quality on these scooters. So. Um, Let's have Ramir come come in and uh, see what we got to get. We got to get the, the perspective of Mr. Ramir Ramir. Hey, 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 everyone. Hello, hello. And I'm back. Yo. So let's get right into it. These three scooters, the ride quality. Number one, I'll say it for me is the E-Move Touring. The Touring yeah. has the best suspension. Sometimes it's not about, you know, how the scooter looks. It's about how it makes you feel. And the E-Move Touring okay. makes me feel real confident. Like I'm going off curbs. I'm just, it's, it's fun. Um, surprisingly, the Apollo was quite good as well. Um, 
Yeah, the ride was nice. It was fast. Yeah. I, I didn't think it was going to take a big guy like me like as, as much as it did, but it really did. And lastly, but not least, the 9 bot Max, the 9 bot Max, you know, it's rated at 220, but I'm way over 220 and it, and it top speed is about 17 miles per hour. It's solid like I think out of all the scooters it's just the most solid scooter that you can have at this price point. Like, you know, if you're looking for certain things and something that's you know, durable, I mm -hmm. think mm -hmm. The way the nine bot feels, you're gonna get that with that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's my three. That's my take. The, the touring, I think that's the best suspension in class in world right now. And yeah, you know, I'm looking forward to the next version. So if Voro, if you guys can get us that one, that'd be great. <laughs> no, <just> cool. <laughs> yeah. No, I think they are. I think they are. I think they're gonna get us the updated uh, touring. Okay. Cool. We're gonna have Raymir come back in for the news section. Cool. I'll be back. Pia. Thanks, Raymir. All right. So it's good to get it's good to get the taller guys, you know, the bigger guys perspective on these scooters because you know not everybody's 160 actually, and most people are not 160. Um, it looks like we got a bunch of questions, so so yeah, let me just respond to Sam Murray before. So the next section I'm gonna go into is tires. So Sam is asking if we were to run the Apollo and the E Move at the same speed as an Ambot Max, would the ranges be similar? Yeah. So so the, there's a couple things, right? If you were to run at the same speed and only measure at the top speed and not have any of the acceleration uh, from zero on, then I would say, as far as I can say, I would say they're gonna be pretty similar and then the difference would be based mostly on the battery capacity, in which case the city would go the furthest, right? And the touring second furthest. Um, but when, but if you say running at the same speed, if you mean starting from zero and actually getting to speed, right, you're going to have more power used for the zero start and, and those motors are just more powerful than the, uh, the nine bot max. Right. Um, and so if there was a way to tune down those motors, so it crept up the speed at the same pace, the same acceleration as the, um, you know, as the nine bot max, then I think they would actually go further. Not sure if that answers the question. Um, I hope I hope it does. Uh, and then Boro Motor says, "Don't worry, electric scooter guy. We got a touring thumb throttle coming your way. Excited about that. But can I also please ask for a cruiser twist throttle? Because that's what I really want." Um, and the second part, Boro Motors, we got on the way for you a electric scooter guide. Yeah, they have a scooter on the way. Oh, you got a scooter on the way. Sweet. Thank you. Thank you guys. That's awesome. Um, okay. And then yes, we're gonna get to, let's talk about tires. Let's talk about tires because there's a big difference in all these tires right here. All right. So for tires, um, let's, talk, let's talk about the Max. I'm gonna go scooter by scooter, okay? Let's just do that. So for the Max, you have the biggest tires, okay? 10 inches, that's big. For an electric scooter, that's about as big as you get. You can get you know 11 inches on some monster scooters, right? Uh, maybe bigger on like one or two scooters out there, but 10 inches is big for an electric scooter actually, okay? And what does 10 inches do for you? 10 inches when it's pneumatic, the bigger, the more the more uh, volume you have that's air filled, right? The more damping you're gonna get, right? So whereas the, the 9 bot Max does not have suspension, you do have the 10 inch tire, which is gonna do the best job for damping. Now, if you were to say, would you get, you know, would you have, a solid tire with great suspension versus a large pneumatic tire with no suspension, which one would give you the best ride quality? I would say that in terms of bumps that you would feel having suspension over, you know, the better, the better suspension over the better tire, I would say the suspension is going to win out there, right? But when you're talking about a uh, solid tire riding on bad terrain and taking, you know, and taking uh, corners fast and things like that, that is where a pneumatic tire you're gonna really feel the difference is when you have real like you know you know those roads that like cracks everywhere they haven't fixed since like 1965 or whatever we have a lot of those in berkeley in fact we have those on the range test and we and it's on one of the corners and so i always take that corner real fast um and see how much sliding i experience on especially on my rear tire you do notice that on a solid tire, no matter how big, even the wide wheel, it's a solid tire. When I take that corner fast, I do feel the back sliding out just a little bit. Whereas on a 10 inch pneumatic, you you can't, you won't feel that. And because that thing doesn't go that fast, 
it's extremely safe. Okay. So super, super safe. The 10 inches is really good for, you know, for damping uh, effects. Just of course, not as good as if it had suspension. Um, and then it also is tubeless, right? It's tubeless and it's pre-slimed, right? So tubeless pre-slimed, what, basically what that means for you is you're going to have the least chance of having a, a puncture where you're going to have to go and change a tire. So it's it, like the, it's like, in my opinion, it's the best configuration for tires, hands down, bar none. If I were to, you know, you know, put together my own Franken scooter, I'd probably choose that configuration with a split rim. Uh, for the E-Move Touring, okay, the E-Move Touring now has a real different, it's like basically almost like the opposite, right? Because it has a mixed style. It's eight inches, so not quite as big. The front is pneumatic, but the rear is solid. So why did they do this? Why are they putting a solid tire in the rear? Well, the bi the biggest advantage of a solid tire over a pneumatic tire is that you can't get a flat. And in good conditions, right? On good roads and in, you know, non-slippery, you know, non-rainy weather, non-damp roads, you're going to be fine actually, right? Like I ride solid tire scooters all the time good roads, I can still rip around corners, you know, you're going to be okay. It's when you have wet roads that that rear tire, right, might start slipping a little bit if you're in like wet, right? Or if it's like real bad terrain, right? That's when you'll feel it a little bit, right? But in good stuff, it's okay. And right, 96% of flats, as we now know, you can ask anybody in the industry where the flats are happening. We've done two different polls and I've talked to at least two or three people now that are in the industry, including mechanics, they're saying 90%, our polls said between 95 and 96%. These are not like small polls. These are polls of like 60 to 100 people. It's about 96% of flats happen on the rear. You can go into why that is, but basically it is what it is. So by having that solid rear tire, front pneumatic, you're kind of getting the best trade-off between low maintenance and high performance. You know, so it's not, you know, it's a good configuration, I think. Um, but not pre-slimed, okay, just so you know. Um, okay, and then the Apollo City is kind of the most, I don't know, it's just like, it's it's just, it's good, right? It's good, it's 8.5 inches, right? So that's like the same size of like a lot of the real popular scooters in the world right now. 8.5 is a really popular size because, you know, it's bigger than the eight inch, but like it's still more portable than like nine or 10. Um, it's a, it's a, and it's a dual pneumatic system, right? So, you know, you get, you know, it's just, I think it's a good trade-off for somebody that wants really good performance, but still really small size. Cause you know, those 10 inch tires, of course they're, they're 10 inches. So you're going to have less portability. Okay. Let's move on to build quality. So for build quality, um, few things are going to go into this, right? One, the IP rating two weight capacity. Although, you know, we're going to throw weight capacity out the window on the nine bot max basically. So let's just talk about this. For, for water resistance, uh, the Apollo City and the Ninebot Max both have an IP rating. The Ninebot Max is IPX5. The uh, EMU, the Apollo City is IPX4. Uh, and there are certificates for both of those, in case you're wondering. The EMOVE Touring does not have an official IP rating. Um, the build quality, you know, this is, I don't know where else to put this, but the other thing to kind of remember about the Ninebot Max, they have this really nice kind of creature comfort, which is an internal power brick. That internal power brick allows you to have two different ports that you can plug, you know, your adapter into the, into the scooter. So one of them is for that big, you know, brick adapter, you know, the one with the box, right. That has a red or green light on it. It still has that port, right? So great. Okay, good. But then it also has the female end of the Mickey Mouse ear cord, right? Which means that you do not have to take your power brick with you if you want to charge the scooter, which is cool. Plus, like my laptop has an internal, you know, it has, it has that same cord. So when I like don't know where my, you know, where my, um, where my cord is, then I, I've got that, you know, I've always got that one handy basically. And it's just lighter. So it's like becomes more portable and stuff like that. Uh, and I guess if one fails, I guess you also have another one. So that's cool. For weight capacity, you know, the Ninebot Max says 220, but guys, this is built as a sharing scooter. It was built to take a beating. I'm not gonna say that you should ride it over 220, but 
like so many people ride it over 220 with no problems at all. And in fact, we've all ridden it. We have people here that are over 220. We still have never had a problem on the Ninebot Max in any capacity, no tire issues, no stem wobble, no nothing. And so the build quality on the Ninebot Max is really at a very, very high level. Um, it's not to say the other scooters are not, but if you look at the fit and finish and the build quality and the quality control, you know, the Ninebot Max really is a step above, okay? The, um, the Apollo City, also really good. This is a scooter that has been through many, many, many generations. It's been fixed. It's been gotten safer and safer over time. Um, there's really nothing you can point to, you know, that that is really like wrong with it at all, right? You have like little things like, you know, when you twist the, the, the handlebars in every scooter that has, you know, twisting handlebars that kind of lock in place with the twist, right? Um, you know, after a, you know, after a couple of miles, you'll feel a slight, you know, you might feel a slight wiggle, right? You may not even notice it, right? It's just the little things that we notice. And then also when you pop that stem up, when you unfold it, you have to remember that, 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 that pin, right? That where in the hinge there, right? This little pin, you got to make sure that that clicks in. And if it doesn't click in, right, it's liable to fold on you while riding. So you have to make sure that that pin, that bolt, right, is really solidly into its chamber area okay and and it's in the video so you can see how that works right it's it's not a hard thing to do you just have to remember to do it right for the um for the e-move touring again really good build quality um super hefty part same as the same as the apollo city maybe even the the, the metal might even be stronger than on the nine bomb max um the only issues we've had you know, we, we've had i think we have close to 300 miles now on the e-move touring uh, we're getting a slight bit of stem wobble, and then the pin, the little pin for the telescoping for the um, the telescoping stem, right? That that pin, it's like you know, it's a spring loaded kind of pin, right? I hope you know what I'm talking about. Um, that pin is just is not, you know, I, I don't know how many times we fold unfolded it, but that pin starting to fail. You can still use the clamp which is what every other scooter uses. Most scooters don't use the little pin thing, only the used scooters and, and this one does. And actually on the my first used scooter, I also had the pin go out on me. But you can just still use the the clamp, right? So it's so it's not, you know, it's not like it it matters. It doesn't really matter. It just it is something that probably will get fixed in updates. Um so yeah, so build quality, I would say good on the touring, better on the Apollo City best on the nine bot max for safety but but one thing that we will go over right is customer service wildly different right uh on on those scooters so when you do have an issue um you'll actually get help with the apollo city and on the um e-move touring right away with phone support but we'll go over that in a second the last section is the safety oh are we at a 175 viewers dang Wow. Wow. We have, Hey guys, we broke a record. This is amazing. I'm, I'm, uh, just want to take a pause and, and say, thank you guys. Thank you to all the viewers that, um, that made this possible. It's, uh, you know, we had a lot of weeks of like a little bit lower viewership. We don't care. We're still going to do it. As long as there's one person watching, we're doing the show for you, but it's so cool that we got, I've never seen 108. I don't know why this is happening. Maybe it's cause these scooters are awesome. I don't know, but thank you guys so much uh, for tuning in. It makes it makes me feel really good to know. I don't know about you guys, but uh, yeah, big big heart goes out to all you guys watching. I'm I'm you know it's uh it's humbling to know that we have this many people watching simultaneously um, and, and everything. So very cool. Thank you guys so much. All right, moving on with safety. Um, here are all the things that make up safety. Stopping distance, type of brake on the front, type of brake on the rear, audible warning device, tire type, front light, front light position, rear light, uh, and then whether it has any additional features. So let's go over that. Stopping distance, this is the big one. This is the most important one when it comes to, to these scooters. And one of these scooters stands out above the rest when it comes to stopping distance because one of these scooters has two mechanical brakes and the other two have one mechanical brake. So it makes sense. Okay, so the Apollo City has two mechanical brakes. On the front, it's a disc brake, and on the rear, it's a drum brake. So you have two. So that's why on the handlebars, you can see 
where is it? This one. You can see you have two places to squeeze, all right? They all come with the electronic braking, but we don't really, we don't really use, that's not like, for safety, that's not typically what we're using, right? For safety, we wanna be able to stop fast. So we don't really include the electric uh, brakes. Even though when I'm actually riding, I do actually sometimes only try to use the electronic brakes just because it's fun. Um, so so yeah, so so stopping distance on the Ninebot Max is, is, is kind of the slowest, right? It's 17.2 uh, feet. We measure this from 15 miles per hour. So we go a little above 15, we slam the brakes as hard as we can, uh, and then we see where we stopped. That stopped, and, and we do this usually three to five times, and we take the median time. Um, so 17.2 feet was the uh, nine bot max, 16.6 .6 feet. Uh, we stopped on the eMove Touring, still good, but 12.2 feet on the um, Apollo City, which is the best, and actually, 10 to 12 is usually rounding error. Like if we did this a few more times, I could probably get it a little over 10 feet. So, I mean, and, and, and also we've, I think we've only had one or two scooters ever stop less than 10 feet of stopping distance. So you're basically within this far of the fastest stopping distance that we can get. And that's because it has two, um, two mechanical brakes, which makes sense because it does go over, you know, it's the fastest scooter at, 28.4, whatever I said, miles per hour, it really does get up that fast. Um, so that is best. The um, I'll, I'll, I'll mention that the Touring has a drum brake, it's on the rear, and then we have uh, the drum brake on the front on the Ninebot Max. And I remember when, excuse me, uh, I remember when we were first doing our first review on the Ninebot Max, we actually were over at Spin because they weren't available yet. They were still on Indiegogo or Kickstarter or whatever. Nobody had one, but the scooter sharing companies were getting demos. And so Spin uh, asked me to come over and test that scooter for them and give them a review versus another scooter that I won't name that was gonna go into their lineup for their sharing market. Um, when I test, a lot of people then, you know, a lot of people in the community were asking like on Reddit and whatnot, they're asking, hey, that front drum brake, if that thing locks up and you're on a downhill, is that going to lock up and make you tip over the front? So I was in San Francisco and I went down the super steep street uh, just north of downtown and I smashed those brakes. And what happens is it doesn't lock up. You almost can't get it to lock up. Even if you tighten the thing, uh, it it doesn't want to lock up. And I think it's it's well done that way. I mean, they, I think they know what they're doing. They're not going to make a scooter that is gonna be mass produced and have an issue where you can't stop on a downhill. So you don't have any issue with that scooter tipping forward with the front drum brake. Um, yeah, I, and, I've, and I've never heard of one you know, either. Um, <laughs> why is everybody yelling Vosk? I just saw the comments. <laughs> That's funny. Drink Vosk? What's going on here? Okay, um, so okay. So we've got audible warning device. Every one of these scooters has an audible warning. Um, of course, the Ninebot Max has this. There it is. You hear that? So it's on. It's on the left hand. Cool. Okay. Um, the e the e move touring has another bell on the left side. Ooh, that's a pretty sharp, mm -hmm. sharp high pitch. And then you got a bell on the Apollo City. Let's see if I can figure out. A little bit lower sound, less ear piercing. They're all about the same, I think, total volume. Uh, I, I probably had my hand covering the first one, but they're all about the same. They're all in the same position, really good. And kudos to Apollo for tweaking the scooter uh, to make that happen, because that's a recent upgrade on the Apollo to have that um, that bell on there. Like, kudos, kudos to them. We always love to see... Uh, you know, the retailers, manufacturers, everybody continually updating scooters because we are early on in the industry and we want to see better and better stuff coming out. And so awesome listening because I think every scooter needs to come with an audible warning device. I also want to mention that on the eMove Touring, they just did another upgrade for their, uh, for their audible device. Uh, I think it's on the left-hand side. We may have a picture of it. I'm not sure, but it's, uh, we have a horn on the left side uh, for the, um, you know, so there's a bell, but then there's also a digital horn on there. Um, okay, so then let's see, uh, for tires. So for tires, right, we already covered tires, but I'll just reiterate, for safety, you want the largest pneumatic tire that you can. Um, I know there was a question about 
uh, honeycomb tires, right? So let me just fit, say that the best for tires for, in, for purposes of safety is going to be the nine bot max. It's the largest and pneumatic for the, um, Second best would be the uh, Apollo City because they're dual pneumatic and they're a little bit larger. And the third best would be the Touring because they're slightly smaller than the City. And then the rear is uh, solid, which gives you a little bit, you know, a little bit more prone to sliding in bad conditions only, right? But on good conditions, you probably won't notice. Um, front light. So front light, we always want them high mounted. However, you can always get an aftermarket. But at least all three of these scooters, well, most every scooter is going to have a front light. They're either going to be mounted low or high. We always prefer high, looking down on the road, also more able to get through and, and have cars see you, right? Because that's what's really important besides being able to see the road for a pothole coming up or some like big giant, tw you know, uh, twig in the road that's going to that's gonna send you flying. So you got to be able to see that stuff. Um, so the Nibot Max is high mounted, which we really like. The um, the other two scooters are low mounted. The E-Move Touring just add a second light for the front as well. That's one of the new upgrades uh, on the scooters that, so I think we're getting sent that scooter so we can check out the differences. Uh, we'll, we'll report back on that. All these scooters though, you can add a secondary high mounted and we kind of recommend it in fact, uh, as part of your standard like accessories you need to get. If you want to look at the ones that we like, so if you need anything, all the all the kind of equipment that we have, we have this like Amazon store. You can find the link to that in the video description where we have the light that we particularly use. It's rechargeable, it's waterproof, it you know, it's, you know, it's good. Um, rear lights, they all have a rear light, so no real difference there. Um, but the Apollo City adds in two amazing features: stem lighting and deck lighting. So these are features that we um that are not gonna light up the road for you, but when you're riding at night, they're amazing to have so that you feel more confident that cars are gonna see you. Because again, if you've ridden a scooter fast, you probably know you're invisible to cars. I don't know what it is, I don't know why, but cars just don't see scooters. It's weird. So when you have, you know, so at nighttime, when you have a giant, you know, uh, stem light coming from the front and then deck lighting, you know, on the sides there on either side, right? That's gonna show up real bright and it's blue, right? And then you have the red of your of your rear light coming out, you know, you're lit up. And so, you know, when, when I'm commuting at nighttime, which I do during the winter, I always wanna take a scooter that has that additional lighting because I just feel safe because I'm riding next to cars constantly. All right, last thing is uh, customer service. So warranty, you know, all these scooters have details on their warranty, right? They cover certain parts, you know, they're like, they cover, you know, this type of stuff for the certain amount of time and this stuff for the second amount of time. So you have to look at the fine print, just you have to do it. However, the maximum warranty length on the Ninebot Max is one year. For the E-Move Touring, they just upped it to one year, so awesome. And then for the Apollo, all Apollo products um, are now two years. Uh, that second year, I think, is at cost for most things, but still really good job uh, for, for, for Apollo to do that. Just again, make sure you just read about it first. Phone support, this is a big one. Um, you know, the Ninebot Max, right? I mean, all scooters are gonna have their issues here and there. For the Ninebot Max, it really just depends where you buy it, right? So if you buy it from somebody with, that has service, good. Amazon, you know, is where a lot of people buy it. You know, it, it's not, not so easy to get Amazon on the phone or Segway on the phone. However, Voro Motors and um, Apollo scooters are among the best basically in North America in their in their regions for customer service. They have phone numbers. You can call them. You can talk to a real person like right away. Um, they know what they're talking about and they'll help you. And, and I can't stress enough how important having a company that supports you is when you're buying an electric scooter because we're new. The industry's new. It's not, it's not been through, you know, a hundred years of generations like the bicycle or something, right? It's super new. There's a ton of features, a ton of parts, especially on the E-Move and the, and, and the Apollo, right? There's just more features to them than on the Ninebot Max. And so there's gonna be more things that can potentially go wrong. So you need to have a place that's gonna support you. And both Voro and Apollo have extremely high ratings for their customer service. So 
There it is. Whoo, how we doing? Is everybody still there? I, I guess so. We're still, we still have, man, I can't believe we're having so many people. Uh, so thank you guys. Um, so we're going to go into the news soon and we're going to do the Facebook stuff. Um, we got some really cool like videos to share with you guys and then we're going to play the premiere. So next up, Raymir is coming on live and we've got your micromobility news. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hello, everyone. I'm back. I'm back officially with the news. Um, Chuck, I know I rushed in here late, so I didn't get the chance to say, how, you know, how was your weekend? How you doing? No, I'm good, man. How about you? How was, how was your weekend? Um, it was pretty good um, with the family. Um, what else? Oh, no. I was also riding, riding a scooter this weekend. Um, I'm not going to say wet scooter, but... I'm testing out for a new video. Oh, okay. What's a, what what do you what kind of uh what are you looking at? What kind of video are you talking about? Um top five scooters for heavier riders, single motor scooters, yeah. I guess it's top true. five single motor top five scooters for heavier riders that are single motor. Yes. We're gonna have to think of a better title for that's a lot of characters, but that's a, a that sounds like a great topic. Yeah, I'm thinking single motor big dog scooters. I like it. I like it. <laughs> let me know what you yeah, guys think. Let us one. know what you think because uh, yeah. there's some good there's some good yeah people have some good ideas in here. They always do, especially on the Facebook group. They you know they might say a few things, but yeah, all you see it in the comments all the time. Like, hey, I'm t I'm six three, I'm two thirty, I'm two forty five, I'm three hundred yep. pounds. Yep. Um, What's the scooter best for me? And the price range normally is from eight hundred to like twelve hundred. So, and those okay. scooters okay. are normally single motor scooters. Yeah. So I thought since I'm here and I've ridden um, quite a lot of you know a bunch of scooters. Yep. That I'll give my take on it. Like you know, I'm, all scooters might not make the list, of course, but it's the scooters that I've ridden that I thought were pretty cool. Yeah. So well, look out for it. It'll be interesting to see what you think about each scooter individually from your perspective, yeah. right? Because that's I know so many people have been asking for your perspective, and I, th I think it's great. Yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I, I hope, I hope, every, I think everybody will be looking forward Hopefully. to it. Hopefully, I mean, I think so. Know, there's a lot of big dogs out there. A yeah, lot, you know, we're we're common. Yeah, yeah we're I think out so. there. We want to be on scooters <laughs> and feel safe as well. So, you know, yeah, we're gonna, I'm gonna put that together and hope we'll have it next ready next week. So awesome. Look out for that. Awesome. So no Chuck next week. Now I'm joking. Chuck, Chuck will out. be here. He'll be here, of course. You know. One one of these weeks I'm gonna take a vacation. No, you can't do that. You can't do that. Chuck, no vacation for Chuck man. all 2020 because the world is on vacation oh, right now. Man. So one time, remember we pre-recorded the live show. Nobody knew about that until right it's, now. <laughs> no, so didn't we tell people? Yeah, yeah, it was February for your birthday. That's right. My birthday, I went and visited Justin, and. Uh, Hung out, Justin and an old uh, old coworker actually in Seattle. It was yeah. fun. Shout out to Justin. He's Shout not, out to he's Justin. Not on the show, but he's always on the show. If you get what I'm saying, he's always in the show. He's always helping out, and he does the whole website. So anybody that's been to our website, you should know it's probably the best one out there. Yeah, that's all Justin. That's not anybody else. That's 100 yeah. percent Justin. PhD scientist. And shout out to David Voss. And shout out to the comments. Everybody in there, you need in the comments. Yeah, and Richie for making all Johnny. this thing. He's over there on the computer right there. Yeah, mask. Always Richie. Go. All right. Let's yeah. let's start off with the first story. All, All right. right. Well, okay, yeah. Let's go right into it. So everything is future based and now first story. Um, London cycle hire data showing strong demands for shared micromobility as a viable alternative to public transport transport to um, to short and medium length trips. Sorry, I'm on the wrong page. No, I saw it's all like right. 14 it's pages all right. to this dang thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, a study, a study analysis are. from Steer Group in London conducted a pretty comprehensive study collection showing the shift in micro mobility travel patterns across the, across the city. So, total travel is down 14% from May 2019 to 2020. Yeah, I mean it's down January through May, but this is uh, you know this is overall from COVID. And I think January was up mm -hmm. and May is up. Yeah, it's just those hardcore. I think he's got the photo there. Uh, it, it, like you can see, yeah, yeah. So you can see the first one January is up, but then during COVID it's down. But then boom, you know it, it goes right back up. But I think the big the big takeaway here, right, is that the trip length is up ridiculous. Yeah, it went from nineteen minutes on average. Okay. To 27, 27 minutes. What? Why is that happening? I have no idea. 
<laughs> but what, what what can be the reason, Chuck? I mean, I, w- I would think that people are, I mean, if you're on a longer trip, it means you're going further, mm-hmm. right? And if you're going further, then are people living further? Are they commuting further? I, you know, I don't know. It's either that or they're replacing more trips that are they would be using things like cars. Yeah. I would think. But I would suggest everybody get a scooter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just wrap it straight up. All right. Very good. <laughs> Boom. There you go. Always Letterman wanted style. To Always wanted to do that. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, okay, next up. The Paris mayor is proposing to place ecology at the so the so the Paris mayor I believe just got reelected mm-hmm. okay and all of a sudden I don't know if it's like you know how like the U.S. presidents like when they get to their second term they're mm-hmm. like all right now I'm gonna do everything that I wanted to do because I don't have to worry about getting reelected yeah I don't know if this is what this lady's doing I think she's a lady sometimes those names kind of get me twisted <laughs> <laughs> but anyway no no offense to anybody that has that kind of name but anyway. What's happening is that, I'm going to just say she, I think it's a she, um, is that she's making the whole like city center, uh, she's like kind of making it a pain in the butt to drive cars a little Mm -hmm. bit more. And she's taking all the extra bike lanes and walking zones that they enacted during COVID, which so many cities did. Mm -hmm. She's making those permanent. Mm. We said it was the future. I think that's, you know. I think that might be the future. I, th- I think that can only be the future for cities. For cities, especially the most densely populated areas. Yeah. You can't, it just, it's just, it doesn't make sense to have the giant SUV to carry one person when you can have, you know, eight people or something in the same space mm-hmm. on a teeny little lane on their own scooters that take up like one, you know, thousandth the amount of energy yeah. and pollution. Right. And cost to the person and go on and on and on and on, right? You know, like you said, in certain cities, we say it all the time, it makes no sense to even own a car. Like, if you're living in San Francisco, it's just so, it's just like... Don't, yeah. Yeah, like, no. It's, it would be the most frustrating thing ever. I mean, I own a car. I lived in San Francisco two years. I owned two cars there, but I didn't drive them. I drove them when we're going to skiing. Yeah. Right? We go to visit the family outside yeah. the city, you know, but not in the city. That's crazy. I wouldn't. I know people do it. Yeah. But like, you're gonna spend just as long looking for your parking spot as you would getting there on a scooter. Yeah. Let's just say that. When I go to these big cities, I normally take public transportation. So it's no. Well, I'm not anti-car, but with certain cities, you know, yeah. it's not. Okay. It's not. Yeah. I don't think anybody's about anti. I'm not an anti-car. I love cars, actually. I mean, I'm into cars. Old I mean, schools. I went. I'm, I went. I had the Acura RSX when I was younger. I was like so I was ripping around the corners. Richie, Richie's giving me the nod there. Yeah. I mean, it was fun, and I loved it. I loved it because I had to drive from San Diego to, um, you know, um, I went to school in San Diego, and mm-hmm. I, you know, lived up in um, Northern California as a family. So I go up there all the time, nine hours. I'm not gonna do that on a scooter, right? Yeah. But in city centers, pff, or if you're, you know, if you're rural and you just want to like go to the store and there's not a ton of cars on those like 55 mile an hour roads, mm-hmm. and you can do it if it's, you know, legal. Legal. I mean, that's the way to do it. Anyway, I, I think what's real interesting too is that they're also lowering the maximum speed for cars in the city center to like 18, what is it, 18 miles an hour or something like that, um, which means that the cars can't go as fast, which which if you think about it, right, the value of any kind of transportation, again, don't, you know, micromobility, you get to experience more and it's almost fun. Mm-hmm. So notwithstanding that, right? The value is getting from A to B, okay? And really, then you can think of what's the maximum value is getting there safely, but of course, speedily, fast, okay? And if you make, you're basically, I think what she's doing is she's disincentive, de-incentivizing, disincent, whatever. She's not making as much incentive. She's yeah. lowering the amount of, in- of value from driving in a car because it's there's going to be less roads and you're going to have to go slower. And so it's like naturally going to force people to kind of take on these other things. And I think once they do ride a bike, ride an e-skate, get a scooter, whatever it is, they're going to find themselves way happier. Mm -hmm. I mean, and there's always going to be some people, you know, maybe the elderly, like a pregnant woman that's about to go into late, you know, I'm sure there's cases, right? Or maybe you're just clumsy. Okay. And those people probably shouldn't be, you know, on these micro mobility devices. And those are the people should be riding the car and then do it. Anyway, next up. All right, next up. 
Oh, we got the big one. The big story. So the big story of the week, if you didn't know, Segway, not Segway the company that got bought by nine by, you know, blah, blah, blah. But Segway, uh, the, the, the device is going, you know, is going, is kind of becoming defunct. Okay. And this is the thing that we saw, you know, so 20 ish years ago, Segway creators, they had a dream, all right, to revolutionize and shift personal transit. And I want you to check out this video. Marcy's hype. A New Hampshire inventor has unveiled his alternative mode of transportation. It is a high-tech scooter called the Segway Human Transporter. The two-wheeled scooter was officially unveiled today on Good Morning America. The invention is being billed as a short-distance alternative to the automobile, but safer. We are empowered pedestrians here. If you and I were to uh, collide, we would be no more uh, problematic than two pedestrians. In fact, New Yorkers would be more like, hey, come on. <laughs> All right. You don't do that on cars and on then, bicycles. So. Inventors have high hopes for the product. They think it could revolutionize the way we travel. I believe the Segway HD will do for walking what the calculator did for pad and pencil. You'll get there quicker. You'll go further. You can carry more anywhere people walk. And it's really fun. The city of Atlanta, several police departments, and some park ranger services are already using the Segway for business, and the Postal Service says it might buy some. Segway represents a major technological breakthrough with the potential to literally change the way people live and work and enable people to get from point A to point B much more efficiently, much more productively, much faster. It has great productivity implications. The Segway weighs 60 to 70 pounds, and you plug it into a regular outlet to charge it. A few downfalls to the transport, though. On a single battery charge, it can only go 15. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, enjoy the clip from, like, what was this, 2001? Yeah. I mean, I, I remember, so in 2001, I was 19 years old, probably, mm -hmm. 18, 19. And um, basically, I was real into technology. And so when I heard about the news of the Segway, this, this this first thing, I think actually it was called something else or there was like some kind of like code name for it. Um, they said it was going to revolutionize the world. That They said like someone, maybe it was like Steve Jobs has a famous quote saying that it was going to like reshape cities in the form of this thing or mm -hmm. something like that, right? It came out. And it was like the biggest launch. I mean, I was like, I had on my, I, mentally, I don't keep anything in my head and my calendar wise, mm -hmm. right? I can't even do it. And I remember just remembering back to this moment when it was going to be launched with just, so, just not knowing, just dreaming about, okay, what is this thing that's going to like revolutionize cities? This is mm -hmm. crazy. And then it launched and I, and I was like, well, that's kind of cool, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think about this? Um... Before I get my thoughts, um, Brandon Smith with the comment. That was funny. Um, Segway, the boomer scooter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty funny. Um, it was interesting when it first came out. It looked weird, but, you know, it kind of launched this whole thing. Like, now they have hoverboards, so it all can, you know, get traced back to uh, the Segway. They used to go out Segway tours in San Francisco at Treasure Island, I believe. Yeah, yeah. That was pretty interesting, so that was pretty cool, but I never really got into it. Yeah. I, was, I was a young kid in 2000. Yeah. I remember I rode one, I think in San Diego one time. Mm -hmm. It was cool, you know, it balanced you. But then I think quickly what happened, I think in China, right? They um, they basically like reverse engineered it and found a, a, a better way to actually balance that's mm -hmm. not using the gyroscopes, using, oh, okay. I, I forget exactly what it was. And then all of a sudden you have all these devices. But I think we all can owe, you know, a lot of micromobility, the self-balancing revolution, right, to this to this guy because there's nothing really like it before right yeah. i think there was a weird wheelchair that did that first that he also invented and then boom it went and he put it into this thing and then it just kind of became not a joke it was a joke it was, but but it was kind of a joke and it then became a joke. It was yeah. a movie. <laughs> and then yeah so so basically you know it ended up becoming you know it's not a joke because like there are yeah, yeah. police forces that use it and there i mean there really is a use for this but we'll just kind of end with this um, one particular movie, who, which you guys might have known already, but we're going to go ahead and play that clip for you. 
Oh, yeah, Paul Blart. Um, you guys know this. Yeah, everybody. If you haven't it. seen this movie, you need to see the movie. Yeah, that's where he made it popular for security guards. I know they have it at Emeryville. It's the da- it's the dance though. Watch this dance. I think he does it. We- <laughs> yeah, Kevin James. He's, he's funny, man. He's the best. Yeah, he's a real class this- act. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. Um, so it's very cool. Um, oh, I got the rest of the thing. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, so that's the end of our news segment. Um, so I think we uh, we're ready to do. Oh, there's one industry news. Um, basically, Voro Motors has a bunch of new upgrades on the touring. We actually talked to you about those upgrades already. It's the um, there's a new key ignition. Okay, and a thumb throttle option. So there's a bunch of new stuff. If you just go on the eMove Touring website, which again, it's it's like in the very beginning of the video description. If you want to check it out, they'll show you what are the upgrades, you know, right there. Uh, and then we're gonna get the we're gonna I think they're sending out the scooter. We'll swap out our current touring with this new one, and we'll see how we like the new upgrades, which yeah. will be which should be, be awesome. Should be good. I, I love the touring. I, yes. I'm mad enough to say that I love the eBoo. Ah, <laughs> yes. Um, okay, we got a couple questions and then we'll go into the Facebook giveaway. So, first question uh, Yaniv Yaniv is asking, how come Justin is never on the show? It's a question. Huh? So, I have the same question. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Well, I think, you know, I think, uh, I don't know. You're going to have to ask Justin. Maybe Justin will chat in there, you know, we'll, we'll see. I can't, I can't answer it for Justin. Uh, he's, he's like, he's actually a robot. You know, he's actually AI, <laughs> yeah. you know? So he doesn't have a, you know, anyway. No, no, he's a real person. Um, Yaniv Yaniv is also asking, did you read that the head of Uber UK left to join a scooter startup? Yeah, I did read that. That was in, so I don't know if you guys get the Micromobility HQ um, newsletter, but that's like the best newsletter for Micromobility. It's like, we still, some of our news basically from their compilation plus, you know, other stuff. But yeah, I did read that. Um, and it's not surprising. I mean, Uber is shedding staff, yeah. right? So it's all getting kind of twirled around. Dude, this is a, there's a lot going on in micro mobility. We I'd love to do just micro mobility in general, right? Yeah. I mean, maybe someday we will be able to be big enough to do all micro mobility, but you Unicycle. know, cycle. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. I mean, all these. I mean, there's so, it, it's just a fascinating time to be yeah. alive right now, where cities are changing and how we get around is changing, and we haven't like when's the last time we had a revolution in how we got around? I mean, cars, yeah, they've been getting better bigger mm-hmm. and more powerful but they're basically it's like they still use the same gas that they did you know it's like the same kind of thing right we still have trains we still have buses i don't know what's different right we still have bikes what's nothing's really changed since mm-hmm. uh you know in a, in a long long time so anyway um so anyway, it's a good time uh last question from dinglebert uh he's asking or she's asking uh e-move touring or e-move cruiser it's a good question. You can answer first. Okay. So if you, I think it all comes down to weight when I always, and price. So if price is no object, then weight is the next thing to look at. And I'll always look, I say, what, what is the weight that you're comfortable having in a, with a scooter? Because if you can go up in weight, you're going to get more scooter. You're just going to get more, more of everything. Okay. And of course price too. Okay. But if price is no object and weight is no object, then of course you're gonna get the the cruiser over the touring, because I mean for me, maybe Ramir has a different opinion, but for me the cruiser is a bigger deck. It's more comfortable. It goes faster. It has the longest range of any scooter we've ever tested at 50.3 miles. It has freaking turn signals. It's got an IPX6 water resistance rating. It's got hydraulic semi hydraulic brakes. I mean, what am I missing? I mean, it's got the bigger bigger tires, dual pneumatic. Are they tubeless? I forget if they're tubeless or not. Anyway, it's just an overall bigger, better scooter. Now, if I was going to get one personally, I, I, I may not get the Cruiser because I live upstairs. And so I'd probably go with the Touring because like, I just don't want to have to lift up the Cruiser up a flight of stairs like 15 times a day. Yeah, for me. How about you? I'm going to go, uh, I'm gonna go with the, the Touring. I think if, if you've seen any of the shows, anytime I talk about scooters... It's about how you know how you feel, and the, the cruiser is great. 
But we all know if you're a heavier rider with the fender, you might have a problem sometimes. But they fixed it. They fixed it. Yeah. They fixed it. The deck is bigger, but it's wider, and the, the touring is longer. So I don't know. It, it, it the suspension just feels amazing on the touring tour. I'm it's just, more it's more springy for yeah, sure, right? Yeah, on like the, it feels fun. Touring. Like you hit a wheelie on it, go off the curb. Like only thing, I, if it was me, is the you know the solid tire. That's the only drawback. But other than that, I like the touring. I like the touring. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. So if it were if if you you know could take either one, you don't have to pay for it. Mm-hmm. And you could just use it every day, your normal commute. Which one would you take between the cruiser and the touring? The touring. I'm I'm six three, so the t- the handlebars are higher. I don't. I think it's you know. It's if, so. If you're right, if yeah. anybody who has a touring out there, they know what I'm talking about. It just feels different. Wow. So I'm excited wow. for this version too. But wow. Yeah. Surprise, That's unexpected. Surprise. Unexpected. Surprise. Surprise. You know, this is why we have Raymere because if you were to ask me what. Someone that's Raymere's side should get, I would recommend them the cruiser. But that's why we need to have everybody contribute their, you know, what they like. Because it's like, you learn a lot. You yeah. know, that springy suspension, that longer deck. Yeah, the cruiser is good. Being able though. to pop the wheelie. Cruiser's solid. The, the range is really, really there. So, I don't, you know, it's, it's tune in next week. It might... It, yeah. One of these one of these scooters might be in my top five. All Maybe right. Both. All we right. Don't know. We know. Who knows? Um next question, not a qu- question. Nordium Carter. You should do a live show where you go on a ride around the city on a certain scooter. Can we do that? Live? I guess we can broadcast from a from cell, phone. cell phone. If you guys are on You know it'd be fun. I would do that. I have an sure. idea. What if we start somewhere? We get this whole thing. You guys don't know how much stuff is in this room multiple cameras lighting all this stuff it looks it looks so easy but it's not anyway what if we started somewhere Mm -hmm. and we rode with like a someone with their cell phone mounted to the backpack of someone else and we rode along and then we got to the office we came in and then we switched over can we do that we can do that i I don't know i think we could do it we just have to switch over the stream okay we just, you know, we go live here. We don't end the, ooh. Well, I mean, anyway, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. All right. That we'll be down for like two, two seconds or one minute. It never happened before. That's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Ricky Joves. How do you, Chuck, how do you fare with the 09 versus 010? So I don't have the 010, but I have scooters like the 010. And I have the 09, and I love the 09. Um, for me personally, weight-wise, of course, I think the 010 is a better scooter overall, but again, it's actually a similar conversation to what we just had, Touring versus Cruiser. You could have that same conversation, 09 versus 010. Not that the Touring is the same as 09, mm-hmm. yeah. but it's similar in that you get you just get more with the with the 010, but I do like those lights on the 09, right? I do like those lights. Yeah, that's pretty. And because I live upstairs, I got to carry that scooter upstairs and I want the lighter scooter. So I wouldn't particularly buy the 010 for me because I don't want to carry 56 pounds or 54 pounds, whatever it is. That's the answer for me. The um, 09 is not rated for somebody that's over 220. So 010 for me. Okay. Very good. Simple. Um, let's see. Um, electric scooter guide. Any news on new videos for when you pick scooters out for someone? Oh, he's talking about the scooter hunters. Oh yeah, yeah. It's COVID, right? Well, well, so so we actually had one lined up, and we had a lot of interest, and then COVID happened, and we actually had like a somewhat famous, not that famous, but like somebody that's been in some TV shows that wanted to do it with us. He lives in San Francisco. We were gonna do a husband wife scooter hunters thing, and we were planning it out, and then the COVID happened, and we were just like not needed, you know, it just. It, it was right at the beginning actually of COVID yeah. when, when all it was, everybody was real frazzled. So we, you know, we can probably start doing it again. I want to do those. I think, I mean, that when we came up with that concept, I thought it was, I just thought it had potential yeah. that type of video. If we kept working and making that better. Um, and I think people like it, you know, they didn't get a ton of views, but I think if we kept doing it more, I, th- yeah. I think it will. I think it will. I think so. Um, so yeah, we want to do it. If you're local or if you're willing to fly out here, like Eric Decker did, he flew out literally for three hours. We had him, <laughs> yeah, and we hours. were like, we had this thing down to the, you know, it, you know, 
uh, for that, you know, if you want to come out, let us know. If you, if, if you know, if you, you know, if you, if you got a good story, you need a scooter. I mean, we got forty of them here. <laughs> we're re we're ready to work with people on that. Uh, Mercedes, thank you for always being in the live chat and and watching our show. Um, my charger gets really hot when it's going full blast, but does cool off as the battery reaches one hundred percent. Is this normal for power bricks? Yeah, it, I mean, yeah. Happens on mine. Happens on my Xbox as well. <laughs> uh, you know, some of the chargers have fans in them. Mm -hmm. So, like the actually the um, the U Scooters Booster GT actually has a fan built in. It's a little noisy, mm -hmm. but it's kind of cool because it has that fan. Ant Man, um, when are you guys gonna have David Vosk on the show, even on Skype? <laughs> uh, so we're trying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, open invitation for David Vosk. If you guys give him enough pressure, he said he'd come on. He just, you know. Uh, yeah, I would like to have him on. Actually, he was on one of our Facebook mm -hmm. things. I think he didn't know it because uh, like he was like out and about, and I was I told him he was it was live on Facebook, but then like and we were chatting about just random stuff as he was walking around, uh, and then and then I think I deleted it maybe later because like it just was it wasn't really like about scooters <laughs> anyway. Um, okay, um, <laughs> Nelson Beltran. Okay. Derek McLaughlin, is it advisable to let your school cool down after a ride before charging it? You know what? We should ping the – so the battery guy that we had on there, yeah. let's get him – That you know, that's not a question I've been asked before. We have the battery, Jonathan Tan of Core Shell Technology. He, he mess, we've been messaging back and forth since the live show segment mm -hmm. that he did, and he's absolutely down to come on to the, um, the Facebook Live. So Wednesdays, we do a Facebook Live at 5 o'clock. So tomorrow at 5, we always do a Facebook Live on Wednesdays. Um, and it's been Ramir and I, but we'll get some guests in the rotation. Maybe yeah. Ramir with a guest. Maybe me with, you know, maybe just the guest. Somebody. Who guess. knows? Maybe Who knows? David Voss by himself. We'll see. Um, so, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll ask him. I don't know the answer. Maybe other people in the live chat can chime in. I'm not, to be honest, I'm not an expert in everything technical. I mean, I'm learning. I'm learning like you guys, right? Uh, next question, Nelson Bertrand. Best question of the day. Tacos or tamales? Easy. Tacos. Tacos. Well, They're tacos for me. I would say it's more rare to have a good tamale than a good taco. I guess. I don't know. Richie, do you have an opinion on this one? <laughs> um, yeah, Richard, he doesn't have a microphone. Okay, all right. I, I think that's why I like tacos because you can get good tacos like at you know. That's true. You can get like I mean, I lived in San Diego. I mean, tamales we I would get tamales from random like random places that would be amazingly good. Yeah. But tacos, you also get. I don't know. Really you know, California. Stuff. We think we have the best tacos and whatnot. Oh, but you know what? I went to Boston and I, I forgot the name of the place, but it was like a little hole in the wall because I've been to Boston three times and was disappointed by you know by the food really? out there. But tacos, tacos were good. Tacos were on point. Like I literally cried. Nice. It was hot, but yeah, you know, it was, it tastes good. All as right, well. you guys are making me hungry. No more questions about food. All right, uh, we should get we should get uh, to the Facebook giveaway. Ready to get this done? Um. Am I ready to? Okay, Facebook giveaway coming up next. All right, so we love our Facebook community. So finally, it's time for a Facebook giveaway. All right, we're back on. So this week, uh, we got we want to thank Voro Motors. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. yeah. So this week we want to thank Boro Motors. We want to thank everybody. Okay. We want to thank and, and and shout out to the the other part of the team is my little sister Mickey, for basically you know handling and she kind of creates the live show because it's just like it usually is my whole Monday and Tuesday to get ready for these things. Uh, I'm on this one. Yeah, I'm on this camera. Uh, so anyway, uh, so shout out to Mickey. All right. So this week. Uh, we want to thank Voro Motors, our fr our friends Melvin and AJ. We're gonna have AJ on the show, I know soon. Um, they're gonna be giving uh, one lucky winner a GUB cell phone mount and a scooter. Why are we okay? It's coming back. Okay, we're back. We're back. We're back. Okay, we're back. We're back. Yeah. Okay, I think we're back. I'm not sure, I'll check. but 
I'm going to assume that you guys can see me. Yeah, we're back. Okay, I don't know what happened, but thanks for sticking with us. I don't know if you can see me or not, but I, I didn't press nothing. I didn't hit randomize. Chuck rolled a six. I'm going to hit the randomizer six times, and whoever's on top is going to be the winner. Am I good? Yeah. yeah okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's go. Click number one. Uh-oh. I think I ran to my... Oh, there we go. Okay. Number two. Okay. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number... Now nah, I'm kidding. I'm not frozen. Number six. Here we go. <laughs> and the winner is Frank... Monterey, Ray. <laughs> Monterey. Um, Frank, Frankie, Frankie, you did it. Congratulations. You got the prize. Facebook giveaway winner of the week, Frank. Monterey. Boom, right. premiere. All right. So, sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. All right. So, um, Congratulations. So it looks like everybody came back. Sorry about that. You know, it's uh, that sometimes our internet just like shuts off or whatever randomly, but you know, we're, we're working on it. Um, so, all right. So thank you guys for watching. Um, let's see if there's any last questions. We're getting the video ready to premiere right now. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to post that link in the, uh, in the live chat for you guys. Um, so let's do that. And I want to say thank you again to Voro Motors. You guys are awesome. Thanks for supporting us. Thanks for supporting the work we do. Thank you for, for you know, giving away stuff to all our awesome viewers tonight. Um, and I, I mean, I heard like multiple people saying they bought cruisers like early on because sometimes when we're like setting up the show, I'll like chat with people or if you watch our intros, sometimes I'll whisper things because it's funny. But um, for me, at least. So yeah, it's good. Um, okay, so we're gonna post the link. Um, the link is actually already in the video description. Um, and there, boom, there it is. There's a scooter showdown. So I wanna say thank you guys so much for tuning in. We broke our record tonight and I just wanna congratulate you guys for helping us to do that. Like we're, we're stoked. I never hit 180 something people before. So like this is kind of awesome. Um, all right. So I'm going to I'm about to click over to the um, the live chat. I'll be in there chatting it up. Um, so. This is Chuck. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Ride safe. Don't forget to wear your helmet and don't forget to wear to wash your hands. And then Ramir needs to end that live show because I'm not in the control group. Goodbye. <laughs>